Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art, and I'm going to start a new book by John W. Goffman and Arthur Tamplin called Poison Power. This is when these two men, it was written in 1972, I'm super excited. I bought this on Amazon for like dirt cheap, look how first run book. And there's probably a first run book because there probably wasn't too many of them. But I bought this book for like, I don't know, five bucks or something. I bought a bunch of books. None of them I paid more than $7 for any of them. But uh, <clears throat> the subtitle of the book is Poison Power, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants. Here we are now, 2015, and we are now seeing exactly what it is. Um, I'm doing some research about closing the Columbia Generating Station and doing some reporting on that. And um, I talked to the people at San Onofre today about the impact, economic impact. And the lady working there basically said, don't worry about it. We, we manage radiation all the time. That's what we do. We manage, all of us, we manage radiation every single day of our lives. Everything in the world has radiation. And you'd know, she said, the banana word. <laughs> But what did she say? She made this big, long laundry list. Like, we go to the dentist, we get radiation. We drive in our car, we get radiation. We go in an airplane, we get radiation. Uh, what she did not talk about was plutonium-239 or strontium or tritium. Yes, there's radiation, but none of it's like this horrible monster. So I'm going to read this. The uh, I'm going to read the forward of this book. And I will read you the chapter. I didn't do this the first time I read the other book. But I think it's worthwhile to read the table of contents. It's something I always do whenever I read a book. I've already read this. So uh, the table of contents, the forward by uh, Senator Mike Gravel from Alaska. The introduction, the nuclear juggernaut. These are the chapter titles. Number one, nuclear reactors to generate electricity. Number two, how radiation from atomic energy program gets to you, what it does to you. Number three, how radiation produces disease and hereditary alterations. Number four, is any radiation safe? Number five, promises, promises. Number six, how safe are nuclear reactors? Number seven, Nuclear Electricity and the Citizens' Rights. Number eight, The Nuclear Legacy, Radioactive Waste and Plutonium. Number nine, Alternatives Available to Us. Number ten, What Can Citizens Do About Nuclear Electricity? Number eleven, Must We Hold Out for the Cold Corpses? Number 12, Toward an Adversary System of Scientific Inquiry. Oh man, are we living in that one. Number 13, The Ultimate Issue, Conversion or Ecocide. I think they've opted for Ecocide, folks. I think that's really what they've opted for. Motherfuckers. Okay, Appendix Number 1. Nuclear Power Questions and Answers. Number two, Moratorium Activists. Number three, Atomic Safety and Licensing Board Panel. Number four, Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards. Number five, When Experts Disagree, Which Ones Shall We Believe? Oh man, we need that one really bad because we've got all these people out there like that lady today telling me, don't worry, we have radiation everywhere. We manage radiation all the time. You know who's right next to us? Surfers. Surfers fill up our parking lot every single day. <clears throat> ah, okay, number six, nuclear power and alternatives. Number seven, U.S. Central Station nuclear power projects. Wow. So here we go with the forward. <clears throat> the forward is again, remember, by Senator Mike Gravel from Alaska. 
who basically made a decision to go with the nuclear technologists and start lying to us and buried everything underground as much as he possibly could. And I beg your pardon for washing my eyes vote just now. Okay, the foreword. I don't happen to like the title of this book. As for the book itself, I hope that millions of people will read it because nuclear pollution is certainly a most serious threat to life. Exposure to nuclear radiation can cause cancer. It can, ca it can cause babies to be born mentally or physically defective. And it can cause increases in many serious illnesses like heart disease. I know of no one else, I know of no one who denies these statements. Well, that was 1971. We now have a whole fucking nuclear industry denying these statements. Fortunately, there is a chance to prevent serious nuclear pollution. Really? It has not yet occurred. It has now, brother. The threat, however, lies in the country's growing commitment to nuclear power plants for electricity and to nuclear weapons for defense. The problem with, the, with nuclear electricity is that as much long-lived radioactivity is produced inside one large nuclear power plant every year as there is as an explosion of about a thousand Hiroshima bombs. Let's let's read that. I'm sorry to read slow, you guys, but let's read this. The problem with nuclear electricity is that as much long-lived radioactivity is produced. Oh gosh, I can't quite get the cadence of that. Let me try that again. The problem with nuclear electricity is that as much long-lived radioactivity is produced inside one large nuclear power plant every year as there is in the explosion of about a thousand Hiroshima bombs. You get that? Every single nuclear power plant produces as much radioactivity as a thousand Hiroshima bombs. When we say long-lived radioactivity, we mean long. Some kinds last for 100, 300, and even 240,000 years before decaying fully. Unprotected, above-ground nuclear power plants loaded with radioactivity in their cores would certainly be large liabilities if this country were ever under attack. Hello, Dick Cheney. They seem to make the country virtually indefensible. Wow. I guess he means defensible. What the fuck does that mean? They seem to make the country virtually indefensible. That doesn't make sense. No wonder we're screwed. This fucking guy didn't even understand English. <clears throat> okay. Unprotected above-ground nuclear power plants loaded with radioactivity in their cores would certainly be large liabilities if this country were ever under attack. They seem to make the country virtually indefensible. Indefensible. Got it. One, two, three, four. Unprotected, above-ground nuclear power plants loaded with radioactivity at their cores would certainly be large liabilities if this country were ever under attack. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. They seem to make the country virtually indefensible. Quite aside from war or sabotage, an accident allowing just 1% of the inner radioactivity to escape from one plant would put as much harmful contamination directly into the environment as 10 bombs. And it would not spread out all over the globe like bomb fallout. It would be concentrated in just a few states. Suppose we had to abandon large sections of this land we love, like right now in the middle of America where 6 million people have 89 times the uranium exposure and nitrate exposure. 
from what they say are what? What did they say there was? From fertilizers. And what does America do? Where does America get its fertilizers? Oh, that's right. We use the sludge from our water processing plants. That's where most of our fertilizer comes from. And so what does that mean? The reason we have high levels of uranium and nitrates is because they're using the sludge from our water processing plants. And the story gets deeper. I cannot deny that the government should be preventing this extraordinary possibility. But when we observe that the government allowed harmful conditions to develop in, out, in our air and water from other pollutants, it is then clear that citizens had better not count on the government to prevent nuclear pollution for them either. I believe that citizens should get very active, very loudly, very fast. I am not at all impressed by promises that growing nuclear activities will never give us any more than a tiny part of the legally permissible radiation dose. Sincerity would require backing those promises with action like supporting a reduction in the legally permissible radiation dose. I haven't seen that happening. Instead, I have read testimony presented by the AEC commissioners to Congress a year ago, that would be 1970, opposing any reduction at all because they explained they do not know how near to the full limit the nuclear power plants might go. I'm going to stop. I see I'm at 11.15. And frankly, uh, I can't wait to do some research and find out when this guy, Senator Gravel, actually turned and went pro-nuclear, but he did. And he's a big reason as to why we're completely fucked in this country. So I can't wait to read this book, you guys. I am very excited. Thank you, Fix It Stupid, for asking me to read the first book and giving me the courage. This is what I mean. We need to edify each other. If you had not asked me to read that book, I probably would not have had the courage to do it on my own. But um, you asked me to do it. You said you couldn't do it. And I decided it was important. And I am very excited to read this book. It comes at a very timely time. Timely time. Anyways, you guys... <laughs> Put your courage feet on. Um, raise your level of self-expectation with joy and love. Self-love. It's the only way we're going to get through this. And I really believe that we can get through this and be a better species on the other end of it all. So, ciao, you guys. <laughs>